Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hey guys, hope you're all doing okay. So I'm obviously, as you can hear and see, I'm not 100% feeling myself. I will never ever knock um, heat stroke ever again. I thought I've had heat stroke before when I've been sunburnt. Um, you know, I felt rough for a couple of days, but this has been a whole different level. Um, of course, it happened when we've had the heat wave, hence the heat stroke, but it was 35 degrees outside um, my bedroom. We don't have tend to have aircon in UK houses because we don't get this sort of regular weather. My bedroom was 42 degrees and I had a fever. So as you can imagine, um, the last few days haven't been particularly pleasant. Um, I have been in pretty much the same position as my dog like that. Um, it's a bit tiny bit cooler downstairs, but because I've got a conservatory, those of you that have conservatories know that even if you have them insulated, unless you get a brand spanking new one where they do all this special glass, um, it's literally like having a furnace attached to my living room that just pumps in heat. So I've kept the doors closed and the curtains closed, but it's still ever so, ever so hot in here, so bear with me. I feel like I'm doing one of those celebrity apology videos, um, you know when celebrities get caught out misdemeanours or they're not treating their staff nice like Ellen recently, um, they always do these uh, videos or take, have a photograph taken with their kind of like little extract of when they do their apology and they're not wearing makeup, they're in a dark lit room, it's like not wearing makeup and looking a bit rough just makes you look like you really mean that you're sorry. <laughs> but I'm definitely not guilty of doing anything apart from feeling absolutely terrible. It got to the point and I'm not ashamed to admit this, I even my mum in tears because <laughs> sometimes when you still sit you still want your mum so I do apologize that I have not been that active over the last week so um what has been going on well Harry has done a strongly worded statement 1400 words bless him I bet that hurt with the dictionary sitting there um actually no you just know it was Megan and he was just writing down everything that she told him Harry has attacked social media apparently he and Megan have been contacting big corporations I bet they've listened to these phone calls talking about how social media needs to be changed. Harry and Meghan wish to redesign social media in their own image like North Korea. Now I've added that last bit on but this is pretty much the feeling that I'm getting. They want to redesign social media. Also I'm really happy that Harry and Meghan have got a handle on that. I mean I don't know how I would have slept at night. Uh, I, struggle, I struggle to think what Harry and Meghan, their education expertise is in anything like this. All they seem to have been doing is phoning up people and telling them what they need to do. Pretty much the same as any speech that Harry and Meghan give to us. Well, they don't tell us what to need to do. They just tell us that we're bad. We need to change. We need to come together as a community. It's laughable really at this point and it makes you think, who the hell are you to say that you're going to redesign all of social media for us? Oh, thank you. That's like them saying, we're only going to let you read this one newspaper. That, my loves, is called dictatorship. You are losing freedom of speech. I choose to follow certain accounts, I choose to go on certain social media platforms. Ones I don't like, I block, I don't use. It is people's choice. Obviously there are certain, and I say hate group, I mean we're talking serious hate group. It's banded around now, isn't it? Like the word racism, like the word woke. Um, a hate group to me is someone like we've been at war against. I can't say the name of the particular group, but you know who I mean in the Middle East. And that to me is stuff that needs to be obviously strictly monitored. They shouldn't even be allowed to have their videos. I've had my videos frozen um, from being posted online and <laughs> I don't do anything of that content so they need to organize that sort of thing where they control social media not Harry and Meghan control social media I don't think certain companies do enough to protect people but I still can't help but feel Harry and Meghan are just on this crusade to change the narrative because of what they've had because they've had negativity directed at them but they're still not grasping it's the way that they've behaved it's the way that Meghan's behaved that have done this and I just think that Harry really needs to clean up his own house and look at their own fan base before they start banding around stuff like that. Whilst I don't believe that all Sussex Squad members are bad, you do have some of the most vile accounts that I have ever, ever seen in my entire life. For those of you that have come across them, you know, it, they are utterly vile. I've seen, as I said, I've seen more hatred coming from their fan base than what I've ever seen anywhere else from any other celebrity. Harry went on in his speech to talk about how social media, with every cl click, we lose a bit of ourselves and um, we're in a crisis of hate, we're in a crisis of truth, we're in a crisis of blah, blah, we're in a crisis all of a sudden aren't we every time we hear from harry and megan we're in a worldwide crisis for something that you and i didn't know about because it's all to do with our unconscious bias isn't it harry 
He's also said that we are a product. You and I, we are products. And if he is a product, that is, I'm pretty much sure that's a product that I don't want to buy. Harry, to me, if being a product, is in the 99% off bargain bin with 50% off. All I see Harry and Meghan doing is whilst they're slagging off social media, they've openly been known to use social media to promote themselves and they are still continuing to do so. They um, obviously don't have their own social media account now, but what they do is they work with various charities so they can then obviously do these speeches and stuff. And I think, well, that's the only reason why they're hanging on to some of these charities. And that's why, you know, they've got all this free time on their hands. How many charities have they actually visited? How many days have they actually, you know, done something that is worthwhile? Two, maybe three. We know they haven't because they would have taken their personal photographer with them and then we would have had days of newspaper articles talking about how saintly that they are. But they're not, are they? And it's just the hypocrisy yet again that they're saying everyone needs to come on social media, it's toxic for your brain, but then they use it. And they're using it to manipulate their young fan base as well because they are stirring up more tensions in subjects and talking about, you know, that people need to rise up and cause anarchy. And I just think you two are like cult leaders and I think it's quite worrying that people are giving them a platform. They don't seem to have any guidance of the subjects that they're talking about. They just go full steam ahead like a bull in a china shop and I think that they are doing more harm than good personally. Harry is always saying that we have the opportunities, we must change stuff, we must do this. Now, Harry, I'll be honest, it's we as in you and your wife. That's your opinions and that's your thoughts. You're trying to push that onto us like you're some religious sect. I'm sorry, but when you say we, that's you and your wife. That's not me, that's not I, that's not us. That's how you feel. And who are they to be preaching from their high tower to tell us how we should travel? how we should behave, how we should treat one another when they treat everyone so appallingly. It's embarrassing. I do not need nannying. I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I'm pretty sure that most people that follow my channel do not need nannying, especially by rich, entitled people telling us what we need to think, how we need to travel, what we need to do, how we are all systematically racist, how we are all biased at certain subjects. No, you talk about yourself, mate. You don't talk about me. You don't speak on my behalf. And you certainly don't speak on behalf of a lots of other people in this country. So Harry has yet again appeared on a dungeon video, as we like to call them. And he has been talking to a civil rights group called the Colour of Change Initiative. Apparently he and Meghan are yet again calling lots of CEOs and owners of company to talk to them about how they need to change their principles, about how they need to change the way that they kind of sell at their company and the advertising that they do. They need to choose principles over profit. Presumably this means Meghan's principles, the same as everything else that they seem to be promoting. We all know it's Meghan's ideologies, it's Meghan's thoughts, this is the way that she wants the world to run. I'm sorry but you're not queen of the planet, it's not going to work. And when we're seeing people like Harry and Meghan speaking every single week talking about it, I again feel that they are definitely stoking up more tensions than what there has been. And for them, it's how they're going to make money, it's how to build their fan base, it's how to market their product. They don't give a damn. They're never going to be down in the crowds with the speaker phones. They're never going to be down with the actual human beings, people fighting for it. They still live off of white privilege. This is one of the things that I find the most frustrating with this couple. Megan doesn't work. Harry doesn't work. They're living in someone else's mansion, okay? They are still having their security part funded by taxpayers' money. Charles, who is white, who is the future king of the royal family, who they continuously slate and talk about white privilege and blah, 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 blah. And they are surviving in LA in that mansion because of the money that they get from daddy each month, who Meghan has now said he's more of a father than her own father ever was. I mean, out to Thomas, but the only reason why she's saying that is because Charles is paying the bills. Now, the problem is with Harry promoting all these tensions, he's also turned around and said that it's every single person in the entire planet's responsibility, and we all as a planet, as individuals, need to come together to fix the problem. Yeah, okay, Harry. Um, I don't know what planet he's living on. He seems to have Messiah Complex. Now, this is worrying. As I said, people are giving him a platform. Messiah Complex, God Complex. Everything these two touch is reverse Midas touch, isn't it? And I just can't understand how Harry thinks that he's speaking for the entire planet, that the entire planet needs to come together. Good luck with that, mate. I don't understand how anyone can take him seriously with him talking about this. You're never 
never going to unite all the world leaders. You're never going to unite all of the countries. You're never going to be able to do this. What on earth a ridiculous thing to come out with? He's never once addressed that fancy dress uniform. He has never once addressed how the, the names that he called his colleagues when he was in the army. He's never once turned around and said, there were several points in my life when I did say this, this and this, and I did behave this way, and I am truly, truly sorry. He's never once. He did the most pathetic apology that even sort of like lots of groups turned around and said he didn't mean it. He was forced to say it by his PR. It was the most pathetic apology. Harry has also offended a comedian. There was a, He went up to a comedian after a show and turned around and said, oh, I didn't realise that you were black. You don't sound black. The constant campaign that these two seem to promote, that if you've ever been held back, if you've ever been told off for doing something wrong at work, if you've never done the job properly, you haven't got what you want in life. It's someone else's fault. It is always going to be someone else's fault. This seems to be the modern world that we're growing up with, that certain celebrities seem to be pushing towards the teenagers of today. And Harry and Meghan are a prime example of that. Nothing is ever their responsibility. Nothing is ever their fault. It's everyone else's fault continuously, isn't it? It's William's fault. It's the A's fault, it's the royal family's fault, it's Meghan's family's fault, it's Meghan's friend's fault, it's Meghan's ex-partner's fault, it's this, it's the schools, it's it's the universities, male, pale and stale, it's, you know, it's this constant blame culture and I just cannot get my head around it. I'm still struggling to see how this book was ever meant to help Harry and Meghan. All it has done is dug them in deeper holes as far as I'm concerned. It is just literally, it's just one big blame game. It's blaming everyone and taking no accountability for themselves, their actions, the way that they've behaved. So what is Harry's gripe in life, how he's been treated unfairly? I, all I see is a spoilt prince that has had everything he's ever wanted and nothing has ever been good enough. That to me does not paint him in a great light. Another part of the book that's come out, as Omid has stated, or it could have been Carolyn, that Meghan was given a, basically, a crash course in royal protocol by the Queen herself. Right, and Meghan was always seen carrying binders of royal protocols around with her because she was studying, you know, so hard. Is that why she didn't wear hats to events, why she wore cocktail dresses to day events, why she wore black and dark navy blue to Trooping of the Colour to people's weddings? Um, is that why she wore those colours despite the Queen asking for people not to wear that because it is a funeral colour, it is a mourning colour? The fact that she wore clashing colours at any events, you know, every Everyone remembers the christening, everyone was told to wear white and blue, Meghan turned up in a khaki green dress. When it came to the final um, farewell, Meghan was said that, you know, the ladies would all be wearing the Commonwealth colours. Meghan turned up in a bright emerald green dress, which funny enough looks like Diana's dresses and hats, I'd like to point out. You know, she has always gone against the protocols, so how could she have been so studious and constantly walking around with folders? She pushed in front of Harry, she poured Harry, she held hands at working engagements. I know some people can't grasp this. You do not hold hands when you are at a working event with your partner. What you do on private dates is something different. What you do in your private life is different. You don't turn to royal events, meeting politicians and stuff, canoodling. You just do not do that. So I don't think that Meghan ever once read those books. I don't think that Meghan ever listened to any piece of advice that she was ever given. But she did all of this and of course it has attracted her negative criticism. But to turn around and say it's <gasps> all because she's biracial, how dare you? It's an unbelievable narrative that doesn't make sense. So to finish up this video, Meghan is making her first debut since signing up with the Harry Walker Agency. Um, she is going to be a moderator at the 19th Represents Virtual Summit and she is going to be interviewing Emily Ramshaw, who is the CEO of the company. Um, I believe that the subject's all to do with equality, the future of news and various other topics that we know Meghan likes to hear her own voice. It's been rumoured and a few blinds have come out that she actually contacted this company and desperately asked to to have a speaking part. Um, Megan did not make it onto any of the panels, nor is she going to be one of the guest speakers. However, she has been given this, the chance, as I said, to be an interviewer. Maybe this is because that the company have worked out that if Megan was a guest speaker, that she would overtalk anyone. But given the way that Megan does like to lead the conversation as an interrupt, I would be very interested to see if Emily Ramshaw actually manages to get a word in sideways. So this might be that the way that Megan is now going to try and remodel herself as an interviewer. So watch out Ellen, she might be making a play to be the next popular USA chat show host. At least Megan won't be unkind and bully her staff.
Oh no, wait. I'll leave that one with you guys. Um, I'll be back really soon, hopefully with a bit more sort of like pepped up, snazzy tazzy attitude going on. So um, I'll see you guys real soon. Take care. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers the time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.